bad one. Bow before your shogun. So, I remember the first time I saw Shogun Assassin. I was in high school. I just wanted a bloody, violent samurai movie. And Shogun Assassin perfectly defined that. It had over-the-top violence, blood shooting all over the place. This was Kill Bill before Kill Bill. Actually, the first time I heard about it was while watching Kill Bill Volume 2. There's a scene with the bride's daughter, and she's a kid watching just this over-the-top, violent movie. I think she's watching it right before bedtime, too. Which one do you want to watch? Shogun Assassin. No, BB. Shogun Assassin is too long. Mm -mm. It was kind of just there to show that this kid shouldn't be watching this. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. I mean, Shogun Assassin is just that excessive, exploitative, you know, violent, bloody film. It's known for that. Just the first time I put the DVD in, and the menu screen is just this beheaded guy with a fountain of blood shooting out. From that very moment, I was blown away. Just the over-the-top blood effects, the action, the villains, the score, great music, the bad voice dubbing. Pompous fool, the wolf lures you to your grave. This is what it was all about though, this is exactly what I wanted. I must have rewinded every fighting scene in this, like a million times. <laughs> Three hundred and forty-five. But it wasn't until later that I found out that Shogun Assassin was actually the first two movies in the Lone Wolf and Cub series. It was actually a series of six films made in Japan in the early 70s. It was based on the manga series and the film starred Tomi Sabara Wakayama. The story was about a former executioner for the Shogun who gets frames, disgraced, and basically he's forced to walk the path of a rogue assassin. And he travels alone with his infant son, Daiguru. He carries him in this little baby cart that's just filled with weapons and swords, guns, missiles, everything. In 1980, the original Japanese Lone Wolf and Cub films were taken over by an American director named Robert Houston. He's a man with an interesting and kind of twisted filmography. It includes civil rights documentaries and Playboy erotica. What he did is he re-edited and combined the first two films in the series. He rewrote and recorded the dialogue in the film. And this was all just to make the films more suitable for American audiences. You cannot escape the Shogun. Everything about this sounds terrible on paper. It's a bastardization of art, and it's been dumbed down for American audiences who refuse to read subtitles. Never understood that. And some of those things are true. But still, Shogun Assassin manages to be something most films aren't. Completely awesome. This is a completely awesome film, and I love it.
and I really shouldn't love it, but I do. It is the ultimate remix film. It's kind of a postmodern exercise that just picks and chooses the best scenes from the first two films, disregards the rest, and just comes up with something new. And while this is composed entirely of existing work, what we get is something totally different. This is a completely different movie experience. Shogun Assassin hacks the first two Lone Wolf and Cub films, mostly the second one, down to the barest essentials. And this results in an 85 minute fight scene featuring Ogami as he just encounters new adversaries every few minutes. And I will hand it to them, there's not one boring moment in this entire film. We watch endless battles, him slicing them into piles of limbs and just geysers of blood. Simply by abandoning most of the plot, Shogun Assassin kind of drifts along from moment to moment. The editing itself has a dreamy, non-linear quality to it. And I actually think that it's improved, not weakened, by the new voiceover from the 70-year-old Gerben Evans. The Shogun just stayed inside his castle, and he never came out. People said his brain was infected by devils. And I actually like having Daiguru narrate in this film. It gives him more life. He tells us exactly what it's like to travel with his father and just what he's thinking. My father hardly ever talks anymore. We just go a little farther every day. When we're on the road, we stop a lot at temples to pray for the souls of the dead. Well, the Lone Wolf and Cub movies make the case that father and son are condemning themselves to hell. It does so over the course of several films. I'd argue though that Shogun Assassin does a better job of making the point sooner. It does it in one movie. Probably because the editing and just the amazing sim score give the holding a much darker feeling to it. There's a feeling of constant dread. And again, I really like the narration they added with that guru. It adds to the character and it just makes him feel more like a real and relatable person. Unfortunately, the original series didn't really do much to bring life to him. It's kind of its biggest fault. Here, he actually seems like the main character just telling us of his adventures with his father. The dubbing, I'll admit, is definitely cheesy, especially in some scenes. It does almost cheapen the experience. Sorry to bother you. Would you return my knife? I do, however, really like the main character of Ogami's voice actor. I think it just goes perfectly with him. Shogun means nothing to me. Die! But majority of the time, for me, it just reminds me kind of the Wu-Tang Clan samples. For any Wu-Tang Clan fan, you'll just love this movie. You'll know why. I also feel like it gives it kind of that 70s kung fu film feeling. The movies in the series are kind of ridiculous, so I, I feel like the tone of the dub goes actually better with it. I think when certain aspects are like serious and the rest of it's just insane, I don't think it really goes that well. But here it just creates a more solid, uniform feeling to it. They're going for just over-the-top craziness. Rewatching this film though, I just really enjoyed this one famous scene from this. It's a scene where Ogami gives Daiguru a choice. Choose the sword, and you will join me. Choose the ball, and you join your mother. What this really is, is a right to passage into becoming a man. Daiguru is given the ultimate choice to leave his life of comfort with his mother. It's a choice that men throughout history have all had to make. And this is usually at a certain age. His father tells him to become a man and survive, 
or refuse to and die. This is a violent world where only the strong survive and it's just perfectly depicted in this one scene. What's pretty interesting too is the same exact scene is recycled in the Mandalorian show. This is where Luke gives Grogu the choice to either join him and become a Jedi, or to choose a gift that his friend Mando gave him and just live with him. I mean, it's Disney, so it's obviously just butchered, but still a nice nod to the original movie that this show was influenced by. And actually, George Lucas has said many times that he was influenced by Akira Kurosawa and samurai films. So it's nice we're still seeing that even today. Because Shogun Assassin was an edited version of the first two Lone Wolf and Cub films, there's only five Shogun Assassin films. Somewhat later, the third Lone Wolf and Cub film was also dubbed into English and it was released by the name Lightning Swords of Death. In his hands, cold steel became lightning swords of death. Only a few edits were made in that version, and the translation is pretty much straightforward to the original movie. Eventually, the other three Lone Wolf and Cub films were also dubbed into English. So Shogun Assassin really is its own creation. There's nothing else like it. Listen to me, Lone Wolf. I... Want your head. I can't emphasize enough how this feels like a totally different movie. I can't say the same thing about the sequels, but just the fact that this one has selected scenes from the first two films changes it from the original too. The pacing itself has no doubt changed. The American version focuses more on blood and swordplay, and it focuses less on the Buddhism and Bushido code of the original. However, this is still essentially the same story. The film itself is an episodic wandering from point A to point B. Assassins come into his path, and Ogami just destroys them with his sword. And sometimes the baby cart gets some kills in there. It's pimped out with spring-loaded daggers and ankle-severing axle blades. There's not a lot of development, just lots of moments. We're mainly just given this grim depiction of life, a near suicidal protagonist, and just lots of shots of the little boy who's growing up just amidst all of these horrors. But he deals with it as only a child really can. Whether Houston achieved his goal to make a more American version of the Japanese films is really beside the point. Fanboys will debate which version is better, either the American or the original Japanese. And this will just go on till the end of time. When I asked my subscribers whether they like Shogun Assassin more than the other films, I got a pretty mixed reception on that. I feel like the people who like it kind of grew up with it, while the others are more purists. Each film just offers a slightly different take on the same story. Beyond debate is just the influence of the film. Shogun Assassin is just a favorite of many, including myself. From those who probably saw it as a Sunday afternoon film on TV when they were kids, just to those who discovered it after seeing Kill Bill Volume 2. The spirit of the film has been used and reused by many filmmakers around the world, and this is because the formula works. You could definitely see this in some Clint Eastwood films, Mad Max 2, you could tell, was definitely influenced by this. Also, Kill Bill is definitely just a love note to Shogun Assassin. It's just a story that audiences are drawn to. The lone warrior who is wronged. He has no greater purpose. He practices his talents on anyone just stupid enough to challenge him. His supposed giving up on any greater goal, such as revenge, seeking power, or even escape. Inevitably, this just leads to correcting a major wrong. The story itself is a reflection of life. Becoming a man and leaving your mother and life of comfort behind. Joining your father, who's just gonna teach you what being a man is all about. It's a timeless, relatable tale that's simple yet complex. And I think that's why so many people are just drawn to it. 
Shogun Assassin doesn't necessarily lend itself to the conventional standards of what makes a great film, and especially that it doesn't have a traditional writer and director and cast. Because Robert Houston just took what Kenji Masumi already had done and he reoriented it into something that was better suited for American audiences. And while it may be the exception and not the rule, it is proof that new art can be created from existing art. I don't know if I'll ever decide how I really feel about our culture just sampling and remixing existing art. It ultimately doesn't really matter because that's the world we live in now. But I know that Shogun Assassin makes a case that it is possible to create a great film from two existing sources. While more traditional schools of thought stick to the notions about how film can achieve objective artistic merit, Shogun Assassin reminds us that there aren't any rules about how a movie gets to its greatness. What matters is that it's great. So if you're wondering whether or not to watch this movie or the original six, I say just start with Shogun Assassin. That's what most of us did back then. Actually, it was really the only option we had. But now it's really easy to watch the original six. But I say if you like Shogun Assassin, then, you know, get the box set. See what it was all about. I'm just glad that I'm able to love both of the versions for different reasons. In the end, this is just an excellent series of films. I had a great time rewatching all of them. I really think next I'm just gonna finally get into the manga. I just want to see how the story really ends and the direction it was supposed to go to from the beginning. Anyway, if you grew up with Shogun Assassin, please leave in the comments your experience. And if you made it this far in the video, please subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, you could also check out my Patreon. I'd greatly appreciate that. And like always, thanks for watching.